Thank you so much. It truly is an eminent panel. They're so inspiring. Um, I remember as a, you know, as a jury of the 30 under 30, when we're looking at all these profiles and we were like, wow, every profile, I think every, all the contestants were worthy of winning. But even within that lot, we had to shortlist and uh, really, really happy to see um, all of them come through. And then today to be actually speaking with uh, three of the winners. So, um, you know, uh, I'll introduce, uh, I'll, in I'll try to be brief and introduce them and then probably give them more time to speak about the journeys during the panel. But we have uh, Girish Anantanarayan, uh, he's the Chief Operating Officer of People. And, uh, you know, uh, it blows my mind really what people does. It's so important. They're working with public schools, with public education. It's a not-for-profit uh, foundation, works with governments to transform education systems and looking at teachers, looking at, uh, you know, the public education system, which really, which really is the bulk of the uh, source of education for, uh, you know, for kids in India. Um, great to have you on the panel, Girish. Um, Thanks, Minya. We have uh, Yashas, we have Yashas Kode. He's the co-founder and CTO at uh, FIRES. Um, so it's very interesting, you know, because FIRES is an online stockbroking uh, firm. And uh, he, uh, you know, he mentions in his introduction that after he was frustrated by the traditional bro brokerages in India, and so he created FIRES. And it'll be really interesting to know uh, how he came about doing that because I was looking at his profile and he, before founding fires, he himself was uh, at a traditional brokerage firm called Sherry Khan. So it'll be interesting to see what he saw there and, uh, you know, how he created fires. Um, there's Gautam Madhavan. Uh, Gautam is in, uh, you know, in a field which is uh, very crowded of the influencer industry and, uh, and yet he stood out. So he's the founder and CEO of Mad Influence. That's an influencer um, uh, company. So it'll be very interesting to see, I think, insights from him in this field and his journey as well. So uh, welcome and congratulations to all three of you. Um, I'm going to, um, you know, start this conversation uh, about uh, about your success, right? We are speaking about how success is a marathon. We have to keep going and going on, right? Uh, but when you keep going, you also fall, isn't it? So I'm going to start about speaking about success by speaking about failure. Um, and uh, so tell us, um, you know, how hard did you fail? Um, how low did you fall? Any of you, maybe, uh, you know, Girish, you could start. Sure. Uh, that's a great place to start because um, it isn't often that we do talk about failure. And um, I didn't quite, uh, yeah, I have been one of the lucky ones who didn't actually, f you know, face failure and see it in its face for a while as I was growing up. And so, so I was working at McKinsey and Company and uh, I was doing well, things were going great. Um, and then I got onto a project where things went way above my head. Uh, I was, I realized that I wasn't ready for the role that I had taken on, but there was no turning back. I had a manager who tried to pull me out of the depths of my misery and tried to get me to perform at the level that I should. Um, I have immense respect and admiration for him, uh, but still turns out that I was almost a lost cause. Um, so my clients were wondering what I was doing, my team was mutinying, my managers were confused as to why someone who used to be a high performer is not able to do it today. It was a variety of factors, personal, professional, cultural, because uh, this was in Southeast Asia somewhere. Um, and finally, after three months, of, you know, I remember this feeling of trying to get ahead of this problem, but just not being able to do that. Um, and finally, I had to be airlifted out of that project and put somewhere else to reset and re-energize. But by the end of that, I mean, I was at, you know, I was crying out of, um, you know, without cause in the office. I was feeling anxious, not able to focus. It was a complete mess. And that rude shock was when I, it was, it, it's one of those things that even, what, four or five years now, I think three, four years now, um, I still can remember how it feels. And it is a very strong centering mechanism when you are about to go down a path which is not sustainable or which won't work. Because I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't resting, you know, trying to get ahead, it just didn't work. Yeah, so that was failure um, and in all its glory. 
and yeah it uh, was difficult but there's a lot to learn from it yeah Thank and you. uh, yeah. uh to to add to what girish was saying is that it's very important to fail early because it actually helps uh, you grow as a person so uh, i've always been very passionate about technology and finance and uh, after my education i actually applied to one of the largest uh, global fintech companies which builds platforms for you know traders and investors so despite giving in my best effort i was actually rejected by them and uh, when i was rejected at my very first attempt of getting a job it really you know i was quite dejected very upset and uh, that actually helped me quite a bit because it uh, you know motivated me to sharpen my skill sets more i took up a course on algorithmic trading which you know deepened my knowledge of technology and finance even more and because of that failure it actually allowed me to look back as to you know i need to improve a lot more and by the time you know we came to a point where we were starting fires i was more well equipped to handle you know larger challenges which came came towards us so i i really believe that uh, failing is a part of the journey and it's a very important step for us to grow as a person yeah. thank yeah, you uh, being true like you know failing early is better sometimes so i failed so i started uh, before mad influence i was uh, i had a different company so i never worked uh in a company as a, like an as an employee never in my life okay but the start the first thing that i started was a company by myself called go dutch it was a crowdfunding platform back in 2015 i was 19 years old and i did not do any i did not know anything out what's out in the world and i just took some money from my father uh luckily uh i had a shelter that that he gave so that i don't need to pay rent i don't need to you know buy food etc etc so i just took this loan of 2 lakh rupees and then <clears throat> i started this journey called go dutch uh 2015 crowdfunding as a platform as a concept was too early for india so whenever i go out to pitch myself to pitch my platform everybody was like oh ye chanda ikatte karne wale hain right it was it was too early for indians to accept crowdfunding as a platform and i was too uh, but we still we still did some good revenue but crowdfunding as a platform you only make money when you're at scale right so we made 20 lakhs of business but the profit margin was 1% so you can just imagine the profit we earned in the entire year uh eventually uh it 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 fall fall off like it fell off from all sides because uh number one we didn't have a team all the team that we had was my college guys saying that hey i'll give you stake but just just work with me uh and everybody was getting 25 26% stake uh at that time and uh, i did not know what the the concept of equity uh sharing and uh, i was the one investing i thought 2 lakhs is a very big amount of money to invest myself so i'll hold the majority and the rest will hold uh, the equity but eventually what happened was uh, and everybody was were getting the titles of vice president coo like you know people with 18 years of age getting just vice president just like that and with having no experience uh what we realized that hey it like i i i, I learned team building I learned team building out of it. I learned that uh, it is uh, for any business. It is not the idea. It has. It is the idea that has to be right for the current scenario, not for the future. Right? Uh, you can. It for if, if Vodach was present today, it would have been one of the be- best platforms ever. But we sold the idea eventually. We sold the platform eventually to somebody. So the software was sold. So we sort of saved some money there. But eventually, there yeah, that's that's one of the biggest failures. And then when we started Mad Influence again, I was not that old. I was 21. And uh, when I entered into the advertising field, a guy with no advertising experience and no marketing experience, the only marketing experience that I had was to sell myself for Go Dutch. Um, and uh, what happened six months down the line, I was at a pre-revenue, like, at a revenue stage of what six lakhs. per month uh revenue right so um what happened i went to an event where i was meeting some great advertising guys who were there from the industry for the last 10 15 years and there was one speaker out there and uh, i'll probably not name him uh, because he's a good friend today um 
so that person i went up to him because his aura of speaking and everybody was just surrounding him and i like you know was in bkc mumbai and i went to him and like hey uh, can i can i talk to you for more like i want to learn from you like you know so the one thing he said that hey um, i don't have time this is my uh, manager's number you can drop him an email and <clears throat> probably fix the time and i didn't feel bad i did that and uh, he never got back so i just thought that okay give me one year that yeah give me one year this challenges just, you right yeah these kind of setbacks challenges i have to get back okay so yeah. now he's a good buddy now he calls me bro i am stuck can you help yeah so, but but i see i get what you're saying this kind of things thanks for sharing it grish you had uh, something to come no uh, as i was just listening to us thank you god it's just i was just also reflecting that to some it just might seem like hmm failures not really able to relate to it uh just wanted to also just you know throw out a reflection there as that no matter what your failures look like when you do go through it now it might seem like something small to a second person or it might seem like something big when you look at it from the outside but naturally as with any experience it is the it is a sort of emotional turmoil and the sort of um uh, stress and tension you go through during that time uh that actually you know kills you yeah. so yeah just thought it's it worth really think of that yeah. i think it's it's really intense and i also think it's the intensity which then probably picks you up and that's what i was you know wanting to ask you because uh, as i was thinking about the panel last night uh, i was also watching wimbledon and i don't know how many of you caught uh, the murray and the shapovalov uh, game and uh, you know where shapovalov uh, fell off he there was this, there was a shot where you know he actually fell down and he fell down and then he picked himself he got up and then he ran to the other side of the court and he you know um actually got the ball so that 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 was making me wonder also about you three that you know yes you did fall but then what makes you keep going uh, um, and i'm sure you know the answer will be different for each one of us so um you know gotham since you 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 were telling us about um, about uh, you got back right you got back the, the person didn't reply that happens that happens even to my students and people who i met they said that oh but you know, this person is not replying and stuff that happens but how did you then make it one year later to be on a you know on a conversational mode with the person that that you that you mentioned or and or even other such examples how do you keep going um yeah for sure like uh, i think uh, one that is one factor to what makes you work even harder uh, but i think the biggest factor for me at least is my team like you know the team that 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 has believed in me that has that has left some good companies and joined us and or probably our team was all under 30 so apart from like two people but I'll, our team is all under 35 okay apart from my cfo uh, but the thought was only like you know they have so every month it is just for me that okay if i stop adding value to these guys there is no like there are better companies who can pay them well there are better companies who can hire them and uh, like you know just just have them at their space uh the only thing that keeps me running even today it is that i have to add value to my first hand team that is my core right my yeah. team that works with the team team keeps you going so the, you. the day i stop it i think uh, like yeah the entire journey is stopped thank you yeah i relate to that i relate to that a lot yeah um, i agree with uh, gautam here because uh, you know as part of the journey i mean your team becomes one of the most critical aspects of it because like the topic says success is a marathon there are going to be ups and downs and during the downs the team coming together and you know helping them helping each other and pushing through and going through that hustle is extremely important in that journey because if your team doesn't come together during the hard times i mean uh, that's that's what will determine how how fast you can grow towards your vision and it's very important to you know collaborate with them and make sure that all of us are aligned with the vision and we're working towards uh, something that we all believe in Yeah. and for us uh, one important thing that we faced was uh, as a bootstrap firm right the the benefit is that you don't have like these rigorous uh, you know expectations set from your investors so 
what actually keeps us going is the passion of building what you've set out to achieve that yes. is what actually helps us to get going thank you thank you yashas another uh, you know push for the team absolutely so girish is uh, does your team keep you going i'm sure it does but is there absolutely. anything else also that you want to add no to so this? i would add two things actually i think um absolutely i i think the reason why i joined people was also simply because of the culture and the sort of people i mean in our team by the way the age range is significantly wider and it just i found it very compared to the uh, mckinsey where it's a predominantly young team just realize that having a diversity of experiences just you know makes it like someone beautifully said uh, you united but not uniform right um and i think what additionally perhaps at least in our case because it's an education non profit what keeps us going is um what you're out to do right and the social impact you're out to create the fact that you know over the last one and a half years with covid things have just gone significantly worse for education in the country and i think we're all grateful for the opportunity to make a difference and to be able to you know in a dark time make things significantly better or as better as you can across like hundreds of thousands of students across states right so that's i think it's difficult but then it keeps you going because it's worth it thanks for the, those uh, wonderful insights um i tell i talk about something more practical um maybe you know you you probably face this on a day to day basis because i certainly did a few years ago um you roll in your 30s you're definitely doing stuff which uh, people in their 50s 60s you know are striving to do building companies leading teams trying to convince others tackling very difficult problems yeah um when i uh, you know when i was your age i was thrown into setups where people were double my age or at least 30 years more that was literally the statistic the challenge which i used to face mostly was that i had to work doubly hard because to be able to you know keep everybody's trust because one thing if i say wrong that people would say that oh you know she's young doesn't know what she's saying so i had and i i would then would realize also the virtue of experience because i could see that you know my um peer who is uh, um you know 60 has done this several times has probably done this 10 times and the reaction uh, that that person would have would almost be out of you know a- instinct because that person's done this so many times whereas for you and um, you know it might be situations where you're actually thinking on your feet and thinking through it for the first time how do you deal with this practical problem of all of three of you young in your 30s tackling things which you know experience would have helped but you're still doing it so well so actually one of the things that really helps is uh, the entire team being very young at our team as well uh, like gautam said i think all of us are below 35 uh many times we don't have that uh somebody much older like a 50 60 year old saying hey you know what this is what you should be doing so it's a, it's important to know that it's okay to do the wrong thing as long as you're learning from it and uh you know as long as you know your you have your mind at the right space some things will not work but as long as you learn from it and pass on that learning to the rest of your team i think uh you know you won't really face fantastic thank you yashas yes. that's so insightful i hope all the people hearing this you know hear that it's okay to make mistakes you know as long as you're learning from it great thank you uh gautam yeah i think um as yash has said that for like at least for me what what i've done is i i listen to a lot of conversations from from a peon to a clerk to to everybody who's out there around me uh and they have beautiful insights to share about their life and experience in like professional world also uh but end of the day i just pick what i feel is right and it's okay to fail again you'll not fail you'll probably lose that particular battle but you'll learn from that particular battle yeah. and it's better not to repeat that that's that's how you do the compromise that's great okay. thank you thank you gautam uh, girish uh, would love I'll to hear your it. thoughts yeah with a we'll follow up question with a little follow up oh, okay. question as well that uh, you mentioned that uh, you do it because it's worth it right and so if you could just also tell us about your journey because you actually gave up a dream job at mckinsey to uh, move to a not for profit um and doing some fabulous work here so if you could run us through maybe the backstage of your life that you know what made you take 
decisions uh, that you did. Right. Sure. Um, I think. How do I answer the two questions in one shot? Let me give it a shot. <laughs> uh, I think uh, to answer the first part of the question, um, I think it's critical to know your source of value. right in your team because the idea is so for example when we work uh, what i bring to the table at least has been uh, being able to structure a problem being able to uh, understand the motivations of the people that you're working with and being able to work with that and help them achieve their success while i wouldn't claim to understand what it means to be a teacher in a classroom and helping 40 children learn better for that i will lean on our education director urmila for example right or when things are way above my head i would also reach out to kriti our ceo and be like listen where would you think you know where do you think this is going right so i think working as a network of leaders helps you to just play your part in the decision making and reach consensus and work and second like you know both yashas and gautam said i think look at it as a learning problem not an execution problem uh, which is hard to do unless you you are told that and once you see it work it works um quick background on how would this happen i mean i've always had an inclination for the social sector um i i put it on reading too many fantasy novels where um you know there was a protagonist and an evil force in the world and wanting to do that and two wonderful parents who've been socially minded um i was at mckinsey and i had delayed my entry into the social sector for enough number of years at every turn it was a decision between mainstream and moving away I got the opportunity while at McKinsey to work with people. So I did a pro bono growth strategy with people. Uh worked for 2 months and that was the one time I worked for 7 days a week because I was just loving what I was doing. And I fell in love with the organization um at that time and then a year out I joined full time. So that's the quick story. Thank you. Thank you Girish. Um Gautam um actually uh, yashas uh, you you uh, in a in the pre in a pre panel conversation when we were discussing about what stuff you know you you mentioned about uh, hustling your way through difficult times um and i just wanted to you know uh, just reflect a little bit upon that because these are critical times these are difficult times for a lot of organizations and individuals as well um how do you how do you do that you know it's easy i think to just put it in that one sentence hustling your way through difficult times but what goes into it is grit this but what else goes into that how do you do that uh actually i think i can explain it better if i just talk a little bit about the journey so yeah. i'll be able to relate to it so no. uh when we got started right obviously we start with the vision of building uh platforms for our traders and investors but when we uh approached a lot of investors and uh you know vcs uh, we were rejected uh, uh plain sight because they said that you know the space is too crowded it's too competitive you know there's no uh scope for a new entrant to come in and do anything so instead of waiting for finding that investor it was a decision that we took to bootstrap ourselves and take the road less traveled like yeah. it was it would have been just easier to sit back and say hey no we're not getting funded so mm-hmm. let's not do it but yeah. it was important to take that plunge and once you take that plunge it's it's quite difficult because being a bootstrap firm you don't really get the same resources that you would have if you were bankrolled by like a huge fund you'll have to make those difficult decisions wherein uh you know you have to be extremely judicious with your funds with the team that you get and the time that you spend you you have very little margin of error as well so at that point you know it's important to keep that hustle going rather than saying you know i'm going to build this and only then go live it's important to just say okay build out an mvp roll it out see what you know works what doesn't work and keep uh, going through that grind of you know that build measure and uh, feedback loop so that you know you're always going through the grind and hustling your way through rather than just having a goal of saying i will either do it all the way or i wouldn't do it at all Yeah. that that's something that's important and yashas you went from traditional to doing something new right because you were at sher khan and then after that you moved uh how, how do you how did that happen uh, did the initial role make you realize about what is needed in the market how did that happen so uh i i started off working with sher khan and yeah. uh, my time there was uh i very quickly understood that i couldn't relate to it so a lot of my peers who were also my age would also not relate to it yeah 
and there was very little being done to cater to people like me who are interested but you know don't really have the tools which we want yeah. so uh me as a user when i realized that it's not being done in the company that i'm working for obviously i saw that there's a lot of potential out there for uh, to be able to cater to the new age traders and investors so and uh, that really helps because when you are part of an ecosystem and you see that something is not being done that gives you uh the ability to see that there's an opportunity yeah. there and along with me so the team that the co-founding team had a similar experience so it was easier to get together and then get started at files no that's 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 great um, i think that's a great message for many of our, many of our people of our members of our audience that when you are doing when you are are at a role and you're getting frustrated you know it's probably an opportunity to think about why what is it that's frustrating you and then go out there and create the solution right so thank you gotham um you know uh, you're in an industry which is getting crowded by the day which is already crowded which is getting crowded out there what's your differentiator yeah we are already crowded when we started we were three agencies of <laughs> Agencies in India, influencer agencies now. Yeah, with five hundred agencies in India. Yes. Last three years. Yeah. Uh, everybody in India is an influencer marketer these days. Yes. Yes. They have like four numbers from different influencers, so they try to. Uh, I think the biggest differentiator with us that we have been uh, touch wood, like you know, I never thought of it back in twenty eighteen, uh, but when we actually started, it was just a bridge between influencers and brands. today it is more of an evolved concept where we are not only that we are also an incubator for influencers and content creators uh that means we have a talent system also wherein we have a lot of influencers exclusive like chinki and janat sabar is the biggest influencer that they have mm. uh we just signed her today's that so uh the the incubation program not only works with the like you know we don't just nurture them we also have a studio space <laughs> that we guys have uh, sort of built so that people can come create content like you know from a utc perspective we just create content randomly but we want them to create professionally generated content so uh yeah i think um, we started with just becoming a bridge between influencer and a brand but now we're just not doing that we're doing more like a complete 360 degree advertising uh but connecting all dots with influencers whatever we do be it social media be it uh media buying be it uh, media production uh be it uh, bollywood we do it everything with influencers slash content creators or even celebrities for say right so we have not left our core mad influence as a core is influence so got it left our core yeah. thank you you know um mini i'm know. so sorry i to interrupt yeah. uh, this no, one no. small thing that i wanted yes, to add yes, yes. uh so a lot of times we get uh, bogged down by what is the differentiator mm. right but many times just being focused on achieving something or just the fact that your team is that passionate that can actually lead to a lot of differences over a period of time absolutely uh, this is something that a lot of people actually ask you okay how are you so different but you may not be able to explain it out to certain people but just having those smaller things accumulate over a period of time is a huge differentiating factor to achieve yeah. your end result i completely agree ashas which is actually my uh, next uh, question that each one of you and the last question the closing uh, you know question that each one of you if you're talking of the marathon you've had a you've had a good start you know you've had a sprint right at the you know start um but like you said yashas that you know it's not always about just the differentiator it is about going keep going with the team right so and you what does the track ahead look like you guys have had a good start but there is a full track of the uh, what does that look like for each one of you and you know anyone can start maybe yashas you know since you were speaking about it why don't you go so uh for us i mean we want to be catering to the millions and crores of people in india who haven't yet started investing in trading so uh the way we look at it is the 1 lakh number that we have is still a drop in the ocean there's a huge market out there which is still untapped so our goal is to just go down this road make sure that we are helping people to make smart investment decisions and just the sheer numbers in india show that there's huge amount of work still to be done 
and uh, we are just at the beginning of digitization in india so i believe that the next 10 years is going to be a transformation in the way people are going to be investing and we want to be at the forefront of that uh, i think it's very important uh, like when we say marathon it has to be not a sprint it has to be a marathon the, the, the day the day we stop thinking that we want to finish the next uh, 10 years in one year that's not possible for some people it might be but it happens eventually because you're doing a marathon and you're not doing a sprint and uh, for us i think we'll be will be will be slowly uh, expanding ourselves to <coughs> a production house very soon we are uh, getting into a music label we're building ips for ourselves but that's that's that was not possible 3 years back uh, yeah. when if i would have raised the funds uh, till now we have bootstrapped uh, but yeah the next uh, big stuff is building ips like building content ips uh, for the for the people who consume content wonderful great thanks gautam all the best for that yeah uh, so in our case i mean the problem that we're trying to solve is massive uh india is one of the world's largest education system like 1.1 million government schools 166 million students going and studying in those government schools and the system in many ways failing them um over the last couple of years it's been ex- exponential non linear growth for people where we today are working across 100000 schools 300000 teachers 10 million students um and one of those strategic decisions we made is that we want to go deeper and you know be because education is one of those problems that is probably the longest marathon one would have it takes decades if not centuries to improve education um and so the journey ahead looks like deepening the work that we're doing in delhi and madhya pradesh where we're supporting the government and perhaps maybe in a couple of years also working in a couple of other geographies but one of those things that we're also doing is every other day we realize that the team is doing something fabulous uh there are lots of innovations and micro innovations that are getting created so we are trying to codify that and making it open for other nonprofits other organizations other governments so that they can learn from the work that we're doing because in the nonprofit sense uh the faster you solve the problem and the more people who get on board uh the better it is mm. so Great. So, Thank Binia, you. just uh, one last parting thought yeah. from my side is uh, something that we believe at Fire is uh, it takes twenty years to become an overnight success. So, it is definitely a marathon, and it's not a sprint. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, guys. Um, you know, it's uh, such a pleasure to be in conversation with all three of you. Congratulations again, and all the very best for that marathon. Um, you know uh, and also keep inspiring you know as you keep going there's an audience that's watching you you know run this marathon keep inspiring so that uh, it's uh, the stride grows yeah so uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, all the best <laughs>